is our uh, piezo kalimba. There's there's eight keys, um, and you can pluck each key, and it sounds a note. Um, on the underside of each key is a piezoelectric sensor. It's basically um, a sensor that outputs a voltage spike when there's a, a change in the crystal structure inside the sensor. So whenever it deforms, you get um, a note. But if you if it stays deformed, it's basically a, a differential that you're looking at. There's a bunch of other controllers. Um, there's a three-way Gibson style guitar switch on this side and a five-way Fender style <coughs> guitar switch on this side. Um, and on the underside, you can't really see, I guess if we show you, if we flip it 90 degrees this way, oh, sure. um, you can see um, these, these pads underneath each pad uh, is a force sensitive resistor. Um, and we use those to control, to, for more analog based control. A piezo sensor, when you flick it, you get a classic like damped oscillation, um, which isn't super useful without fine tuning it a little bit. The op amp I chose to use over here is um, a TLC 272, which is um, a single rail op amp. So we only we only care about the positive values. So um, you, we're only powering it five volts in ground, um, and it so it amplifies the signal, um, so that we can um, actually use it and and optimize the the dynamics of the piezos. Um, so we have eight, eight channels of those piezos on this board. Um, and then we also have four channels, for each of, one for each of the FSRs. We have two buttons on the side, and that's just a, a digital circuit uh, pull-down resistor. Um, and we have, these switches are operated in a similar way as the buttons. And uh, we have an LED here, it's, a, it's an RGB LED, so it's basically three LEDs in one. Essentially for the piezos, we just have um, the eight different, well we had eight, one actually ended up shorting out so it didn't work. So what it does is it reads in the analog value um, and then once it reaches a peak, it st stores that value so it can output it as velocity and then once it goes down by a certain amount, it outputs a uh, note out. Um, and then once it goes back all the way back down past a noise floor, it outputs a note out, uh, a note off. Um, so you get the note on when it goes up and note off when it goes back down. Um, although with the piezos, as it turns out, the duration of the pluck is only dependent on the circuitry, so we can't actually get any um, decay from the key itself. So it, basically you have a constant duration for everything. So for scales, I have this other patch that basically has um, <coughs> 10 different scale generators. This is a scale generator. What it does is it stores the relative intervals within the scale. So for major, you'd have um, root, uh, whole step, whole step, half step, etc. cetera. Um, so that's how we can easily have all the notes in the scale and then press a button to go up a step in the scale or down a step in the scale. Um, or you can also just transpose it up a half step or down, uh, down a half step. These two buttons on either side, um, if the three-way switch is all the way down, they go up and down the scale, or if it's all the way up, they go up and down just a half step. So you can change the key. If it's in the middle, it's temporarily up a half step. So, uh, yeah. so when you release it, it goes back down. This is just um, control uh, managing all the different FSRs for the different actual controller numbers. So for each of the different setting, uh, settings on the three-way switch, um, you get different controller numbers. What I'm actually reading in from the FSR, the rate at which the controller number goes up is higher the harder you press it. So that's really how you get kind of an easy way to um, do the controller as well without having to really think about it. Ultimately what we did was uh, having up and down and so we're only looking at it as the value is increasing, right? And once you release, once the value is decreasing, um, you, you latch at that value. So you can do that going up and then you can also do that going down. Once you get the hang of it, it's easy to kind of like play around with an LFO or something. Um. Uh, so we used PVC pipe just so you could sort of forces your hands into these this curved position and it places the FSRs right where your fingers are. Um, so you don't really have to think about it, you just squeeze the instrument while you're playing and you adjust your controllers. Um, the Piezo sensors, we managed to actually mount clips to the keys so you can pop them in and out. 
Yeah, we tried to keep everything within thumb's distance, and uh, I think it worked out pretty well. One of the biggest challenges we faced uh, physically was um, the normal kalimba. When you press the key, it vibrates, the whole instrument vibrates, and um, what we were finding was while piezos are great at measuring vibration, uh, we initially used the, store, the normal uh, kalimba design, which has two metal bars. You clamp the keys down, but the problem is that you hit one key, all the other keys started vibrating as well. And there was no real way, um, good way, to enable us to play multiple notes at once while still keeping that design. Um, so we ended up sacrificing a little bit of uh, the ability to, uh, like the finesse of the um, vibration in each uh, piezo by adding a lot of um, insulation and uh, then also setting a pretty high noise floor for triggering the note. The reason we, we liked the piezos was because um, we could look at velocity. Um, if we were using some sort of button thing, it's on or off, but with uh, an analog sensor you can, you can strike a note quietly or, or loudly. Um, but because of the noise issue between piezos, we had to sort of sacrifice some of that um, dynamic range. Um, just to make it work. When you're interacting with this, I mean, you can even see what I was playing in the beginning. Uh, when you have a lot of different things to control, it can get really chaotic and you can get lost. So um, the main patch is really just this subtractor. It's a, um, kind of a basic synth. Um, and we have basically the, uh, the controller values mapping to different things. So right now, yeah, we have LFO rate and amount. Um, and then those are the FSRs. For the, from the FSR, yeah, uh, and filter, filter resonance and frequency. Um, and then we also have reverb and delay, um, which is on the middle setting for the three-way switch. So you can do dry wet mix for each. Um, and then there's also just a piano sampler, just because it's a lot easier to hear what you're actually playing.